Hello all, this is Dr. Shivam Puddar. I'm a third year resident working at SDP Institute of Medical Sciences in Ahmedabad. I'm going to be presenting a paper on role of MRI in intracranial space occupying lesions today. Intracranial space occupying lesions, as we all know, comprise of a diverse group of lesions. It could be anything, um, whether neoplastic or vascular, or inflammatory or infective. Anything which occupies space within the brain and increases the intracranial tension tends to be termed as an SOL. With MRI, imaging of intracranial SOLs can be done with excellent anatomical detail and tissue characterization. It helps in early diagnosis and localization of the space occupying lesions along with helping in early treatment of the same. In my present study, I've taken either patients who have been clinically suspected of having an SOL or have already been diagnosed with an SOL by previous cross-sectional imaging of MRI. Aims and objectives with early detect detection, localization, and diagnosis of the SOL using MRI to characterize those intracranial SOLs and to evaluate the extent of lesions in patients with the raised intracranial tension. Materials and methods have taken 60 cases in this study, which uh, all of the patients were, uh, the MRI of all of the patients were done in SVP hospital between October 2019 and June 2020 on Skyla 3 Tesla Siemens MRI machine. Inclusion criteria included all of the patients who were suspected of having an intracranial space occupying lesions or who had already been diagnosed as having previous SOL or had, or had raised intracranial tension. The all age groups were taken irrespective of sex. Exclusion criteria were of anything, any patient who were contraindicated to have an MRI, such as metallic implant insertion, cardiac pacemakers, or metallic foreign body in situ, or patients are having claustrophobia. Results. Most predominant age of involvement was the fourth decade, followed by the fifth decade. Male to female ratio in present study was 1.7 is to 1. Headache was the most frequent complaint, followed by seizures. Visual speech and smell disturbances followed them, and uh, other symptoms of uh, race and tracheal tensions uh, were 8%. Other symptoms like anorexia, weight loss, ear discharge, and pyrexia were also seen. Parietal lobe was the most commonly involved lobe, followed by multi lobe bar involvement. Edema was the most common MRI finding, followed by mass effect. Hemorrhage was seen in very few patients. Aggressive tumor showed all of the findings in the majority of cases, such as astrocytomas. Edema was most commonly seen with astrocytomas and metastases. Mass effect was most common with astrocytoma. Similarly, calcification was commonly seen in oligodendroglioma, craniopharyngiomas, and metastases. Necrosis was most common with astrocytomas, and hemorrhage was most com mostly seen only in metastases. As you can see, the predominant age group involved was 31 to 40, followed by 41 to 50. Sex distribution was 1.7 is to 1. And the clinical presentation was headache, followed by seizures, and then the follow other symptoms. Hemispherical involvement says uh, parietal lobe was the most commonly involved lobe, followed by multi lobar involvement, followed by the frontal lobe. Right-sided cases were the most involving the right side of hemisphere, which is the right hemisphere, followed by a bilateral and then the left hemisphere. Uh, predominant MRI finding in all of these patients was edema, followed by mass effect and then the calcification. As you can see, uh, aggressive tumors like astrocytoma would cause all of the effects such as edema, mass effect, calcification, necrosis. Hemorrhage was found to be seen in only metastasis in my study. Calcification was predominantly seen with oligodendrogliomas, craniopharyngiomas, metastases, tuberculomas. This is different ratio of all the tumors which was found in my study with astrocytoma involved was 28% followed by metastases in 30% patients. The maximum number of patients, as I already told, was seen in fourth decade followed by fifth decade. Certain tumors like hygrocliomas and metastasis involved later in life, that is fifth and sixth decade. Tumors like craniopharyngioma, oligodendrogliomas, meningiomas, abscesses uh, occurred, occurred early in the age, such as second to fourth decade, whereas choroid plus papillomas were seen in the first 22 decades. The sex ratio was found to be quite comparable with the study conducted by B. Shah et al. Number of male patients were more in both the studies. However, the meningiomas were the only tumors having a definite female preponderance in both the studies. 
In my study, edema was the most common MRI finding, followed by mass effect, whereas in the study conducted by Mr. Bisha, the uh, mass effect was more predominant as compared to edema. Calcification was seen in all, all the cases of oligodendrogliomas in my study, as well as in the study conducted by Mr. Bisha. Hemorrhage was seen in 8% of astrocytomas by Bisha, and whereas none of the astrocytomas showed hemorrhage in my study. In my study, high-grade gliomas are the most common subtypes followed by low-grade gliomas, which was not the case with the other study. Uh, in the study conducted by Bisha, it was low-grade gliomas followed by high-grade gliomas. Direct signs for the diagnosis of intracranial space occupying lesions include the tumor itself, normal intensity, or enhancement in different degree of enhanced scans. Indirect signs include edema, mass effect, intratumoral bleed, or calcification, or bone changes. In conclusion, MRI is the most sensitive modality in the diagnosis and characterization of endocrine space occupying lesions with the accuracy of 98.5%. Most common symptom is generally headache and the edema is the most common associated MRI finding. The most common hemisphere to be involved is parietal lobe. Meds for the single most common group of uh, intracranial space occupying lesions, while among primary tumors, gliomas were the most common. And among those gliomas, astrocytomas were the commonest. Here are a few examples. This is a case of astrocytoma. This is a post-contrast actual and T1, uh, sagittal T1 with a tumor involving the frontal lobe, as you can see. This is a case of craniopharyngioma involving the cellar and the supracellar region, and it's predominantly cystic. This is a T2 sagittal weighted image. This is non-contrast flare image as well as post-contrast T1 coronal image of a case of meningioma with internal non-enhancing necrotic areas. This is a case of a patient with known case of lung cancer. As you can see, uh, the patient has two uh, metastases involving both the hemispheres. A uh, patient came with seizures and on MRI post-contrast, few uh, tuberculomas were seen, as you can see. Thank you.